Welcome to our lectures on language theory. This is the first lecture within the third module, that is lexicology. The lectures are delivered specially for the students studying at the Department of English and German Languages, whose major is Foreign Language to Foreign Languages. The theme of this lecture is Lexicology as a Branch of Linguistics, the word as the basic unit of language. The outline of this lecture includes the following points. Object of lexicology, links of lexicology with other aspects of linguistics, types of lexicology, two principal approaches in linguistics, the word as the basic unit of language, word structure morpheme, and we will finish with classification of morphemes. The term lexicology is composed of two Greek morphemes, lexis, which means word, and logos, meaning learning. Thus, the literal meaning of the term lexicology is the study of words. It is a branch of linguistics dealing with the vocabulary system of the language. It studies the total sum of all the words that the language possesses. Thus, this science studies the properties of the words as the basic units of the language. Modern lexicology aims at giving a systematic description of the wordstock of modern English. Modern English lexicology studies the relations between various lexical layers of the English vocabulary the specific laws and regulations that govern development of the vocabulary, the source and growth of the vocabulary and changes it has undergone. Now let's look uh, in more detail at the definition of a word and vocabulary, uh, them being the object of lexicology. The word can be defined as a structural and semantic entity of the language system. The word is simultaneously a semantic, grammatical, and phonological unit. Lexicology studies various lexical units, words, variable word groups, phraseological units, and morphemes which make up words. The word, as well as any linguistic sign, is a two-faced unit possessing both form and content or, in other words, sound form and meaning. Word group is a group of words that exist in the language as a ready-made unit with its unities of meaning and syntactical function. The term vocabulary means the total sum of words that there, that there are in the language. It is the system of words and word groups that the language possesses. The size of the vocabulary of any language is huge. No person can learn or know all the words of the language. Individual people possess their own total vocabulary, consisting of all the words they know. Another word used to denote vocabulary is the term lexicon. In modern linguistics, three main meanings of the term lexicon are distinguished. The first, the vocabulary which a speaker of a language has in his or her head, that is mental lexicon. The second, the set of lexemes of a language and the processes which are related to them. And the third, the set of lexical items of a language. Now we'll consider links of lexicology with other aspects of linguistics. There are different aspects or branches of lexicology. Any language is the unity of different aspects, grammar, vocabulary, and sound system. As lexicology is the science that deals with vocabulary systems, it is definitely connected with all the rest of the aspects. Lexicology is linked with phonetics since the latter is concerned with the study of the sound form of the word. There is a close relationship between lexicology and grammar. Grammar is concerned with various means of expressing grammatical relations between words, as well as with patterns according to which 
words are combined into word groups and sentences. Lexicology is bound up with stylistics, since there are problems of meaning, vocabulary stratification, style treated in the frames of both the branches. The structure of words is studied by morphology. Ways of coining new words is the object of word building. Meaning of words, their relations in vocabulary became the object of semiology. Set expressions and idioms are studied by phraseology. The origin of words, their development in the language are dealt with etymology. And the behavior of words in speech is considered by contextology. The history of the language tells about the development of words in different periods of their history. How the words changed, lost their endings, began to sound differently. It tells about the change of the phonetical and grammatical structure of the language. We can make up a conclusion that lexicology is closely connected with all other branches of linguistics, such as phonetics, grammar, stylistics, the history of the language, constructology, and many others. Now we'll consider types of lexicology. There is general lexicology and special lexicology. General lexicology studies vocabulary in different languages of the world. Special lexicology studies the vocabulary of one particular language. Every special lexicology is based on the principles of general lexicology. There is also historical lexicology and descriptive lexicology. Historical lexicology studies the changes of the vocabulary in the course of time. Descriptive one studies the vocabulary at a given stage of its development. Historical lexicology uses the diachronic approach to the vocabulary. It focuses on the regularities of the vocabulary of the development of the vocabulary. Descriptive lexicology uses the synchronic approach to the vocabulary. It describes the principles of the organization of the vocabulary as a system. There also exists comparative lexicology, which studies the lexical systems of closely related languages aiming at their typo typological identity or differentiation. Contrastive lexicology, which studies similarities and differences of related and non-related languages. And there is applied lexicology, which includes terminology and lexicography, translation, lingua didactics, and pragmatics of speech. Two principal approaches in linguistics. There are two principal approaches in linguistic science to the study of language material, synchronic and diachronic. We have mentioned them in the, in the previous slide. So, sing means together, with, and chronos means time, from the Greek words. With regard to special lexicology, the synchronic approach is concerned with the vocabulary of a language as it exists at a given time. It's special descriptive lexicology that deals with the vocabulary and vocabulary units of a particular language at a certain time. Dia means through and chronos time. That's why the diachronic approach in terms of special lexicology deals with the changes and the development of vocabulary in the course of time. It is special historical lexicology that deals with the evaluation of the vocabulary units of a language as the time goes by. The two approaches shouldn't be set one against the other. In fact, they are interconnected and interrelated because every linguistic structure and system exists in a state of constant development, so that the synchronic state of a language system is a result of a long process of linguistic evaluation of its historical development.
Now we'll have a closer look at the word as the basic unit of language. There are many definitions of the word, yet none of them is totally satisfactory. Despite the achievements of modern science, certain aspects of the nature of the word are still not clear to us. We know almost nothing about the mechanism by which a thought is converted into sound groups called words, or about the reverse process when the listener's brain converts the sounds into thoughts. The word should be and can be defined, and the definition should be based on the most important characteristics of the word, which are as follows. The first feature. The word is a unit of speech which serves the purposes of human communication. So the word can be defined as a unit of communication. The second, the word is the total of the sounds which compose it. The third, the word possesses both external and internal characteristics. By external structure of the word, we mean its morphological structure. For example, in the word post-impressionists, the following morphemes can be distinguished. The prefixes post-im, the root press, the noun-forming suffixes ion ist, and the grammatical suffix of plurality s. By the internal structure, the semantic structure of the word where its meaning is understood. Meaning is the word's main aspect and it is only due to their meanings that words can serve the purposes of human communication. The word possesses both external, formal and internal semantic unity. Formal unity implies that no other elements can be inserted between the component morphemes of the word, which are permanently linked together. The word semantic unity consists in the fact that it conveys only one concept. For example, the word blackbird conveys only one concept, the type of bird. But the word group a blackbird conveys two concepts, a color and a type of animal. And the fourth feature, the word can be used in different grammatical forms. All that had been said about the word can be summed up as follows. The word is a unit used for purposes of human communication, materially representing a group of sounds possessing a meaning characterized by formal and semantic unity and a capacity for grammatical employment. This seems to us to be the rather satisfactory definition of a word as a linguistic unit, which covers all the most important characteristics of the word. And now we'll talk about the word structure. Words are divisible into smaller meaningful units, which are called morphemes. All morphemes fall into two large classes, roots and affixes. Affixes, in their turn, are subdivided into prefixes which precede the root, as in the word reread, for example, and suffixes which follow the root, as in the word teacher, for example, or speaker. There also exist infixes, but they are not productive in English. Root morphemes carry the lexical meaning of the word. Affixational non-root morphemes fall into derivational morphemes, which carry the lexical grammatical meaning and serve to form new words, and functional morphemes having grammatical meaning inflections. Lexicology deals only with roots and derivational affixes, while inflections are studied in grammar. Root and derivational morphemes constitute the stem of the word. Roots are usually free morphemes. They often coincide with independently functioning words, for instance, pan, work, good. 
Some roots may be bound as well. They may not coincide with separate word forms, as in the words, for example, possible or 14. All affixes are bound morphemes. There are also semi-affixes or semi-bound morphemes, which stand between roots and derivational morphemes. For instance, fireproof, waterproof, ladylike, businesslike, starlike, worthy, manful, etc. Here you can see that schematically the classification of morphemes and the lexical and grammatical and lexicology is concerned, of course, with the lexical, or they are sometimes they are called derivational morphemes, which are subdivided into root and affixes, and affixes are further subdivided into prefixes and suffixes. And this is a more detailed classification of morphemes. Semantically, morphemes fall into two classes, root morphemes and non-root or affixational morphemes. Roots and affixes make two distinct classes of morphemes due to the different roles they play in word structure. The root morpheme is isolated as the morpheme common to a set of words making up a word cluster. For example, the morpheme teach in the words to teach, teacher, teaching. This is the root morpheme teach. Non-root morphemes include inflectional morphemes or inflections and affixational morphemes or affixes. As it has been said before, lexicology is interested only in uh, affixational morphemes because inflections uh, are considered to be the concern of grammar. And there is one more classification of morphemes, the so-called structural classification. Structurally, morphemes fall into three types, free morphemes, bound morphemes, and semi-free or semi-bound morphemes. A free morpheme is defined as one that coincides with a stem or a word form. A bound morpheme occurs only as a constituent part of a word. All affixes are usually bound morphemes, but roots can be both bound and free. And semi-bound or semi-free morphemes are morphemes that can function in a morphemic sequence both as an affix and as a free morpheme. That's all in brief concerning the content of this first lecture devoted to the Fundamentals of Lexicology As a rule, you are offered a list of comprehension questions to check, to check your understanding of the lecture. And here is a list of sources for further reading. Thank you for attention.